This is the DMT One to One show, episode five, recorded on the 11th of April, 2013. It's so a DMT One to One show, and this week I'm really happy to have on the show Wolfgang Sanchez. Uh, Wolfgang is a music consultant uh, as freelance, but also is a project lead and business development at uh, C3S. So that's the reason that we're having him on the show today. So hi, Wolfgang, and great to have you on. How's it going? Hi, Andrea. Well, hello. Uh, so, uh, you know, I want to hear all about C3S, you know, we're going to go quite in depth into, into uh, what, what you guys do. So first of all, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, generally what C3S is. Yeah, uh, well, uh, C3S uh, has much to do with the current situation at uh, Germany because uh, at the moment right now we have uh, one um, collecting society for uh, musical co uh, content and uh, this is uh, the GEMA. And um, there are quite some problems um, at uh, various areas right now because um, they uh, try to invent uh, new tariffs for clubs and uh, for uh, other business, etc. And uh, uh, they are very much uh, colliding, very many colliding uh, interests uh, in uh, very different uh, areas. Um, but uh, where we came in, uh, it's uh, um, quite a long time before because uh, we started in uh, 2010 and when uh, together with uh, the guys from uh, Creative Commons um, uh, Germany, um, we spoke to GEMA um, if it's possible to, to integrate Creative Commons uh, with GEMA so that uh, creators uh, have the uh, option uh, to also um, license under Creative Commons. Um, but um, uh, just as it is right now, um, they uh, ne neglected uh, this case and um, they didn't want to do it. And uh, this was uh, when uh, we... Um, uh, uh, did some uh, kind of research and uh, came up with the idea to do a collecting society on our own because yeah. this is the only way to do it. Yeah, sure. And, uh, uh, you know, in, in English it stands for Cultural Commons Collecting Society. So, yeah. of course, a strong uh, tie in with Creative Commons, as you mentioned before. Uh, so, first of all, let's talk about that. So, what are the challenges uh, in Germany and other European territories when it comes to musicians and Creative Commons? Um, yeah, right. Um, at the moment in uh, uh, Europe, it's uh, like this, uh, that there's uh, only, I think, uh, three countries uh, uh, in which uh, collecting societies are running uh, projects uh, together with uh, Creative Commons, where you can license under Creative Commons uh, as a creator, that's uh, France, the Netherlands and Denmark. Yeah. And um, that's it. Um, in the US, uh, it's uh, totally different uh, because it's uh, based on law that uh, every collecting society has to offer the uh, possibility to license under Creative Commons as well, which doesn't mean that they're happy about that because uh, they don't like Creative Commons at all. Of course. And um, just uh, to, to avoid any uh, misunderstanding, so we don't uh, want to be... Uh, a collecting society only for Creative Commons because uh, that doesn't work and uh, so it's uh, for the uh, non-commercial um, uh, types of uh, collecting uh, of uh, Creative Commons licenses uh, for the commercial part of the non-commercial licenses so if the uh, creator wants to get the money for um, the use of uh, his songs uh, in a commercial context and uh, on the other hand, uh, there will be the option to license uh, under regular uh, licenses. So you have uh, the uh, total flexibility uh, and you can't, uh, can uh, say what you want for a kind of uh, um, um, uh, licensing. Yeah, sure. And of course, uh, you know, looking at the broader picture on creating a new collection, collection society, uh, that's, uh, it's a really bold move. And of course, uh, uh, some may feel that uh, societies like GEMA, for example, have, uh, uh, you know, I've heard comments uh, talking about, you know, the age of the board and the fact that they're, they're not very flexible uh, mm -hmm. and uh, not very f forward thinking in terms of digital technologies. And, uh, uh, but, but also, you know, of course, there are some huge processes involved in the, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day maintenance of a, a collection process uh, which are hugely expensive and, 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 and complex so uh, so that's that's the first challenge I guess like how, how do you plan on on uh, uh, starting out C3S as an, uh, an organism an organism that can meet those uh, those problems of course 
Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, we want to try to, to reduce um, all of the uh, efforts uh, which uh, have to be done uh, um, in, uh, by persons uh, right now and uh, collecting societies uh, to do it, uh, do most of the things uh, automatically and uh, by the available technology. Yeah. Because um, this isn't. Uh, um, used uh, to a large degree with uh, other collecting societies and this is what we want to do for example when it comes to reporting uh, playlists etc and uh, uh, and something like that and um, this is the one thing and uh, on the other hand of course uh, when we want to uh, build up um, this kind of architecture for um, uh, the cultural commons collecting society it's a very uh, complex task and uh, it takes uh, a lot of time, of course, and so uh, we have um, to, to focus on a different uh, kind of, of licenses, uh, one after the other. So maybe uh, we start off uh, uh, with the uh, uh, live licensing and uh, uh, so uh, with uh, performance uh, yep. uh, licensing and uh, go into uh, online uh, licenses after that. Um, and uh, one thing uh, which definitely uh, will be um, a much heavier task is uh, to um, go into the area of um, airplay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is something uh, we want to address uh, later on. Yeah, of course. And so, like, there, there must be some t at times, you know, an overlap between artists that uh, want to be with Gema, but they also want to. Uh, have music on Creative Commons because, for example, Creative Commons is a, is a fairly straightforward option to add into any SoundCloud upload, or, for example, and that's, a, and that's a German service, so it's got a, a big user base in Germany yeah. as well. Uh, so how does, that, how does that overlap work? Yeah, uh, right. So on the one hand, uh, you have uh, the people mostly um, in the uh, DIY area uh, who are doing it for themselves, and um, that is okay. And um, they don't have to sign that much, uh, uh, that many contracts, and uh, there's not that much uh, effort to do in, in business. But um, uh, when it comes uh, to time that they um, uh, become more successful, uh, then it's uh, really different and um, they want to get airplay, they want to be uh, uh, integrated in all uh, the business and uh, uh, labels are quite suspect about uh, creative commons and um, uh, promoters as well. So it's it's very difficult, difficult. and so right now um, it's a fact that they're more or less um, urged by the situation to yeah. uh, join GEMA. It's it's um, the uh, the alternative uh, which is missing right now, yeah. and uh, this is very difficult. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, what uh, is you know uh, what is the feeling uh, amongst uh, you know artists in Germany? You feel about uh, some of the latest developments, for example, uh, in regards to the deal with YouTube, because uh, uh, that's one of the big stories that is coming yeah. out of Germany right now. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to YouTube. Um, there's um, the uh, uh, one group of, of artists, uh, of course, uh, who say, uh, well, uh, we don't want to, to see our uh, um, uh, uh, rights, uh, our copyright um, uh, um, uh, um, violated uh, on, on YouTube, and uh, it's okay what Gimmel does, but uh, the majority, the vast majority says, uh, well, it's okay uh, if you want uh, to uh, negotiate uh, a fair contract so that we get uh, some money from YouTube, uh, but for get to an end and uh, end that uh, 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 that negotiation uh, with uh, uh, YouTube and um, settle that uh, contract. And uh, so, because uh, it's really uh, devastating uh, what's been done uh, to the music industry uh, right now. Yeah. Uh, when you get a newsletter from uh, any band in the US and they want to uh, um, uh, show uh, their new uh, video and you can't watch it. So uh, it's, it's uh, really silly. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and uh, looking at you know the, the roadmap for C3S, of course, uh, uh, it's as we said, it's a relatively long process. Uh, you guys yeah. started in 2010. So, uh, 
Well, um, you know, looking on your on your website, uh, of course, you were uh, looking at becoming a, uh, you know, you, you became a legal body uh, uh, last year, and you're hoping to uh, be uh, recognized as a collection society uh, by the DPMA. Uh, yeah. And has that happened yet? And how what what's the status uh, on the uh, process? We are not formed as a legal body uh, as of yet. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, this is um, well one of the big obstacles uh, right now because uh, we have uh, to uh, to look uh, very focused and very detailed uh, on uh, what we're doing uh, for the uh, statutes uh, that they are uh, uh, very uh, exact uh, and uh, the same with the uh, business model uh, model. Um, just as I said, um, that uh, we want to plan uh, which uh, uh, kind of licenses come first and uh, come after that, uh, yeah. so uh, that we can uh, work that out. This is the one thing. And as soon as we have uh, done that, we need uh, to um, uh, get uh, members. And uh, as soon as we have enough members uh, to um, back up, uh, the uh, business model, uh, we can uh, submit uh, submit um, our um, application to the uh, DPMA, the German uh, Patent and Trademark Office, and um, that's uh, where we can uh, get the license to uh, work as a collecting society. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so it's a, it's a relatively complicated, but very complicated process, I'm sure. And do you find that like there, there are um, restraints or, you know, uh, roadblocks that are put into place because you know right now uh, co collection societies in Europe are essentially a territorial monopoly in the sense that there isn't a huge deal of choice uh, when it comes to your own uh, society so do you find that there's legal roadblocks to setting up an alternative? Um, I think um, what uh, most people might see as uh, legal roadblocks it uh, um, it's it's uh, very well uh, thought of. Uh, um, it's uh, a kind of conditions um, that we we have to fulfill because sure. if we can cannot fulfill uh, these um, uh, um, conditions, then uh, um, we can't uh, do our work because uh, we uh, are the ones uh, who have to uh, to handle all the money from from the artists from the members. And uh, um, that must be uh, prepared very, very carefully. Yeah. And uh, um, so um, I think um, the most uh, difficult it will become um, after um, uh, we are founded. And uh, um, in particular, uh, when it comes to um, uh, establishing uh, the C3S in other European countries, because yeah. uh, that's uh, what we want to become, a European collecting society, not only for Germany. Uh, Germany is only at the point where we want to start. And um, because uh, in Germany, it's okay if you are going to start another uh, collecting society. It might be difficult, but you are able to do that. Um, but in other countries, uh, for example, like Italy, uh, um, there it's a real monopoly, and yeah. there's only one collecting society. And um, okay, the EU tries to to change that, and um, there we are uh, completely with the EU, and uh, we hope uh, that uh, things will change, and uh, that uh, by offering an option with C3S, uh, this will help. Yeah, sure, and uh, yeah, Italy. Uh, um uh, I remember b back in the day when I was uh, I registered with the CI when I was uh, still uh, like maybe 14 as a as a songwriter and uh, you still had to like submit to the most in incredible paper forms with the first eight bars I think of a melody line transcribed by hand onto a sheet of paper and then send it off by post and uh, mm -hmm. it was it was archaic it was it was amazing I hope it's it's not still like that because that would be insane this the, I'm I'm talking about maybe like. 12 years ago now so <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, and so you know looking at some of the companies that are making the better use of creative commons and uh, and, the, and the different layers as well uh, of, of of how that can be implemented i, I was quite surprised by hearing in in, in your uh, panel of south by that is actually really interesting i would recommend everybody to go and check out on soundcloud i'm going to put the links in, in in the show notes for this interview um yeah. the one of the artists that were on the panel were talking about how things for them changed overnight when they changed their license from uh, free for non-commercial use to free for commercial use as well. And that yeah. ena really enabled them to uh, 
get their music licensed on, on a variety of, of things because people of course are looking for free music that they can use mm -hmm. even in a commercial setting uh, I mean uh, the, the worry on that front is that isn't that sort of a little bit scary because you can see a company like Samsung or you know a company that that is big mm -hmm. uh, want to just save on music and just use free Creative Commons rights to to uh, you know to to be able to 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 have music without paying for it and at the same time does that generate enough exposure for the artist to justify the music being free? Uh, do do you see a bit of a of a, of a debate there happening? Because I mean I understand if it's a use from a from an independent filmmaker or somebody that genuinely wouldn't be able to pay for the music but if you have a creative commons free track that is free for everybody for commercial use and then it's used yeah. by a corporation for example that poses some questions as to as to whether they should or shouldn't pay for the for the music so what's your what's your take on that it's, it's kind of a complex uh, issue well um from our point of view it's um uh, uh like that that uh, when um a musician offers, a creator offers uh, his work and he wants to be paid for it, then he should be paid for it. And yeah. it's also, um, it's a bit difficult uh, when there's a, a large company uh, um, which uh, kind of urges you um, to, to go into a buyout, for example, and uh, make uh, easily money from that. So. Um, um, they have uh, more power to, to urge you into uh, lower prices, of course. But uh, I think that's uh, right the point where it's uh, necessary to, uh, to have um, a stronger partner like a collecting society yeah. who uh, really acts uh, in the sense of creative commons and, uh, on the other hand, uh, also um, uh, in the sense of the uh, creator and um, then you have a totally uh, different uh, position as if you were only uh, one single artist. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Um, that's a, a very uh, um, important thing, I think. Yeah, of course. And just to like uh, clarify for people that might be listening, uh, artists, for example, uh, if you do offer your music uh, and you're allowed to and you're not with a collection society uh, in Europe or you are in the US uh, and you offer your music uh, via uh, Creative Commons uh, and you allow that to be for commercial use as well, uh, what is the process that like that does the, the people that end up using the music for, com for commercial use have to get in touch with you anyway? Because I'm sure like a lot of people will be worried or not know enough about cre Creative Creative Commons to to allow that because they think, oh, maybe anybody can just come and take my music and not even let me know what they're doing with it. So, mm -hmm. do you know what what the process behind that is? Um, so, um, the process uh, for people licensing on a, a Creative Commons yeah, and on a Creative Commons uh, that is that is free for for commercial yeah. use. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's uh, uh, one very crucial point um, because. Um, as soon as you're um, using uh, Creative Commons as a creator um, yeah. and you're using um, the so-called uh, non-commercial licenses, it's a bit misleading because um, the licenses only uh, tell the user what he may do or may not do. Yeah. And so if it's a non-commercial license, then he's allowed to uh, use um, the work um, in a non-commercial context without yeah. uh, um, checking back with the creator, yeah. as long as he mentions uh, who is uh, the creator and uh, where he got uh, the work from. Um, but uh, as soon um, as uh, uh, this uh, licensee uh, wants to um, uh, use uh, the work in a commercial context, yeah. Uh, he has to check back uh, with the creator. Yeah. If he uh, does not, and um, uh, you find out about the uh, misuse of your work uh, in a commercial context, uh, then it's possible, uh, based uh, on uh, Creative Commons licenses, uh, to um, uh, um, to uh, um, uh, get into a lawsuit against um, the. Uh, non-licensee because he uh, misused uh, your work and um, um, this is possible because uh, Creative Commons is based uh, uh, on uh, standard copyright yeah. and uh, this is uh, what uh, um, f a fair amount of uh, people uh, do not know and um, it uh, also has happened uh, uh, especially in the uh, world of, of uh, images. Uh, I think there was, were uh, um, lawsuits in uh, Israel and uh, Belgium 
um, where people used um, uh, pictures under Creative Commons uh, in a um, context uh, which they were not uh, suited for or they did not uh, have uh, the um, uh, contract uh, with the creator and uh, um, therefore they were sued. And uh, of course, uh, that's a super important point because it really uh, makes makes it more even more glaring how there is a need for uh, a society like yourselves that can take care of people that yeah. are using Creative Commons to uh, help them and to organize them into guaranteeing their, the, you know, their rights as well. Uh, because of course, you know, if you're a single individual independent musician and you don't have any backing of any sort, uh, it, it may be very daunting for, to enter into any sort of litigation of, of that of that size. So of course, having somebody like C3S to back you, that that would be pretty pretty great. Uh, and so. Looking at sort of the the next twelve months, uh, what are your biggest challenges as an organization? Like, you know, are you looking for um, for support? Uh, it, does that come from public funding, or are you looking for private uh, people to to help uh, yes. the organization? Well, um, that's uh, um, exactly the uh, biggest challenge uh, to uh, get the funding um, to get it all started because right at the, uh, uh, in the first uh, time we'll need uh, quite a, a large sum of money um, because uh, we need uh, the uh, IT uh, structure, uh, the architecture build, etc. And uh, so it will become quite expensive and um, the problem is uh, we are a non-profit organization and uh, therefore um, uh, most people um, uh, will not be uh, interested in uh, investing uh, uh, money and on the other hand we don't want uh, to be uh, independent from large companies say for example Google and um, that's uh, not our interest and uh, um, so um, Exactly like you said, uh, we are going uh, first uh, after uh, public funding and uh, we uh, started uh, the uh, first um, uh, submissions uh, right now to see uh, if we can uh, get the uh, money because then we can uh, also um, uh, get more people in the team and yeah. uh, it uh, will be just uh, another way of working um, uh, than it is right now because uh, everyone in the team is uh, doing it for free right now of course. and um, uh, we have to concentrate uh, on what we're doing and uh, we can only do it uh, uh, if we also uh, get some money for it. Because of course, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah, I know that. And uh, no, it's, it's, it's a great project and uh, absolutely I would recommend everybody to go and check out. Uh, it's uh, c3s.cc and uh, I think if you go on to the main site, it starts in German, but there's a, a big link on uh, uh, to get the page in, in English. So that's uh, pretty straightforward and you can find all the information about uh, C3S uh, that you need. Uh, uh, of course, you can also get in touch uh, with the organization uh, through the website in case you wanted to to uh, help or support or give you, give your advice or your opinion on, on what they're doing. Uh, I'm sure they, they would appreciate it. And uh, it was absolutely great having you on the show, Wolfgang. I, I, I really look forward to hearing uh, what the developments on C3S are going to be in the next uh, few months and few years. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com.